Hey everyone, it's Aaron Schechter from 365shaves.com and the Wet Shaver Review. Coming to you today to talk to you about day number three in my UK and French soap themed week and a little review on each of the soaps I use on each day. Today I happen to have a French themed shave and I used none other than the infamous Prix de Provence. Prix de Provence is an amazing soap. Um, it basically says Enrich en Bure de Carit. The only thing I know in that entire sentence I said is Carit, which in French Carit means shea. This is a shea butter and from what I've been told Take this with a grain of salt because this is only based on rumors I've heard on, on forums and from what other people have said that there's approximately about 20 to 25 percent shea butter um, that is in the mix of this soap which is actually amazing and would kind of make sense considering how moisturizing this soap is. So let's get right down to it. Um, the first thing I look for as we're starting to find out when I review a soap is the packaging that it comes in. Well, it's pretty basic. This is the actual packaging um, that Pre de Provence comes in. You could buy these tins um, off of pretty much any distributor's website. It's just a aluminum tin. They usually hold this as five says it's five and a quarter ounces or 150 grams of soap. Um, you can pretty much buy these aluminum tins. I, actually, I think the tins that you buy online might be a drop smaller than this. I believe that they only hold five ounces of soap, the tins that you buy online. But for all intents and purposes, it's the exact same thing. Really nothing fancy about this tin. Um, it serves its function. It serves its function very well. It holds the soap. It's a screw-on lid. As you can see, believe it or not, I do use the soap quite often and it doesn't really look like it, but I do actually use the soap on a, on a fairly regular basis. Um, it seems to have a very nice lifespan to it. Um, so as far as packaging goes, I, I pretty much say it's neutral to be quite honest. There's nothing really that catches my eye about it. There's nothing that really um, grabs, you know, means pulls me into it and says let me go grab it that's an awesome looking package um, the only thing I will say is there is something to be said about simplicity um, I do like the very simple logo it's a paper logo which is a double-edged sword because if it gets wet it kind of gets ruined and it starts to look like if you could notice like there's like like wear going on here and the the ink starts to kind of run together but I like the simplicity I like the logo of you know basically it's a bird it's actually three birds um, it looks like probably a male and a female with um, the male with his chest kind of bloomed out courting a female and another bird flying over the top of the head of the two others I'm sure there's something symbolic going on with it um, I'm not that smart to figure it out to be quite honest but you know there's something to be said about the simplicity of the design of the logo and the packaging um, but nothing really that special about it. It's adequate. Best way to put it. It's adequate, serves its purpose. Moving on, let's talk about the smell, the aroma of this soap. This is one of the places that Pre de Provence shines. It is a very mildly scented soap and it is intentionally mildly scented. The dominant scent is of mainly of sage. And what I mean by, and it's a white sage specifically, um, kind of like if you ever see, and I, I don't really know what these are called, but where you get those like bunches of sage and they're kind of like wrapped in, um, you know, decorative twining type of thing. And people use them, you know, for uh, aroma type stuff or for blotting into oils and using them as uh, sage brushes and stuff like that. That's pretty much the dominant scent of this soap. It's a very relaxing very uh, calming scent. Um, on the base notes of it, there's also Virginia cedar I could pick up on. I could pick up on a lot of other florals um, that are in there. Um, whereas, because sage is really on the herbal side, I also pick up on some floral uh, scents like lilac. 
uh, geranium. Um, but those are really more in the background. Um, like I said, in light, you know, Virginia cedar, which is very light in the background. Um, the main the main thing to take away is a very calming, relaxing scent, which I really enjoy. It's not overpowering. It's not, you know, it's not a uh, aroma bomb where you're going to, you know, be blown away by the uh, by the scent in regards to it being overwhelming. You more than likely will be blown away though by the overwhelming... That's my phone in the background. There's no bomb going off. Someone's trying to call me and I should have turned my phone off, but I'm not going to start this video over. It should stop in a moment. Um, <laughs> uh, you might be blown away by the gentleness and the overall how can, I, how can I put it? Um, the overall mellowness and delicateness of the scent and how well executed it is. So as far as scent goes, I would say this is a phenomenal scent. Um, the aftershave is a little bit stronger scented than the soap itself. The soap is strong enough on its own to carry itself on its own merit, but the aftershave is a little bit stronger and I do recommend that you do use the two together because they do complement each other obviously perfectly. Moving forward, let's talk about lather. Uh, depending on which brush you use will affect the lather. Obviously, you're going to get more lather out of a very dense, thick, you know, best badger or silver tip badger brush than you will out of a very thin, you know, um, you know, let's just say boar brush. Uh, what I used today to lather, and it was actually the first time I ever used it. And I, because I wanted to really kind of almost, because I have very good results with this soap and I know the soap well, I wanted to almost handicap the soap a little bit and use a brush that I wasn't really sure if it would perform well with to see what it did. So I used, um, it's another French, it's actually a French brush and I'm, I'm not sure how to pronounce it properly. It's either Plisson or Plisson, um, synthetic. I used a synthetic brush today with this and I did my normal 60 second swirl. 30 seconds counterclockwise, 30 seconds clockwise, and went to face lather. I face lathered and I left it in my full scuttle in order to just keep the lather warm. I didn't bowl lather, I face lathered it, and it came out perfect. It actually far exceeded my expectations. Um, it, it was actually better than if I was to use a badger brush. I was actually thinking it was going to be less than a badger brush and it ended up being more than it was with the breath, uh, than with the badger brush. It was very luxurious, very uh, creamy um, lather. It was, it, once again, this is not a, um, a lather monster. It's not, it's not like mounds of lather falling off your face, though I'm sure you probably can get it to do that. Um, but with just normally face lathering, you're going to come up with a nice moderate layer of lather across your face, your neck. And I was really, really, really pleasantly surprised by what I was able to produce with the synthetic and the pre de -Provents. So in that regard, the lather was exceptionally good and I can vouch for how it performs with both boar and with badger. And um, I got to say, I actually really prefer using the synthetic now with this. It, it was very impressive. Um, and it performed wonderfully. It, it was not airy at all. It was not overly watery. It was just the perfect consistency uh, to provide, you know, you, you couldn't see any skin underneath. It was completely stable. Uh, no disappearing acts like I had yesterday go on with me. Um, and it was just a, a pleasure to lather on my face and the aroma that was with it, like I just said, was very relaxing and, and set the tone for my day. The final thing I look for in a soap is glide or slickness. Now today I used for the first time today, and I'm not reviewing this, but I'm going to show it to you because it was a custom piece I had made for me by um, Bishop Doug Pickle uh, from DC Cutlery. I actually had this battle axe of a straight razor custom built for me. It's a 7 eighths razor with a progressive smile. Let's see if I can get that in a little bit closer because I have a lot of what's called hollows in my face which is basically just means if you look at how um, for example 
this razor fits in that pocket, in that groove of my face. I can bring this razor in very, very closely to that spot and it fit very nicely. So that being said, this is my uh, largest razor, number one, heaviest razor, and it's a custom piece by Bishop Doug Pickle, and it was the first time I used it today, and I was very impressed with how uh, the performance of it. Uh, quite honestly, it exceeded my expectations. So, onto the glide and slickness of Prix de Provence. Exceptional. That's the only word I can use to describe it. It was exceptional. Um, I just explained to you that the lather itself was moderate. It was not a lather bomb. It was not uh, uh, watery or airy. It was just the, the perfect consistency. If you just think of um, just a creamy, luxurious lather that was just painted onto your face, you know, had that nice um, plaster-like consistency, or maybe uh, Greek yogurt is a better way to describe it, consistency to it. But um, it provided so much glide. It was just such a comfortable shave. I honestly think I had the closest shave I've ever had. I don't know if it was because of the razor or because of the soap. I don't know, but I think I've got the closest shave I've gotten since I've started using a straight razor. I've gotten the closest shave on my neck that I have to date. Um, I'm sure that it was a little bit of both. So as far as glide and slickness goes, Pre de Provence is an absolute it, it, it's a winner in almost every regard. Uh, the only place I really think that they could do a little bit better is probably in the packaging. It's just the packaging really, it, it's it's just so basic. It's um, for such a wonderful soap that's just so delicate and so um, beautifully made. I, I would just expect it to be packaged a little bit more eloqu eloqu eloquently. <laughs> I, I, I could speak, I guess. Um, eloquently and a little bit more uh, maybe fanfare, you know, especially um, and maybe I'm being a little bit um, uh, preconceived notions, especially with it being a French soap, I would think that it would be a little bit more ornate. Packaging, the, the logo is ornate, it's nice, you know, a um, little bit simple, but it is ornate, you know, it has a lot of nice scrolling in it. Uh, and whatnot, I would just think that the packaging would be a little bit more than the aluminum tin, but maybe that's in order to keep the price at a, uh, at a, uh, you know, moderate price. And I think I paid, and I, I don't, unfortunately, on the logo on the back, it does not tell me how much I paid for it, though I think I paid in the neighborhood of right around $20 for it. I think that the five and a quarter ounce puck cost right around $20, um, in the tin. Um, so... As I've been saying, in the 365 shaves slider bars, you'll see how I rate each individual component of packaging, scent, lather, glide, slash slickness, and what the overall score is. I will tell you, though, Pre de Provence is an excellent, excellent soap. I highly recommend it. Um, I would not put it up against other French soaps. Um, a lot of people like to compare it to, uh, to um, Provence Sante. Uh, it's not Provence Sante, it's, it's Pre de Provence. Compare it to itself, not to another soap. Um, it's easy to get caught in that trap where you're saying just because it's from a particular area, it has to be exactly like another. Because to be quite honest, I think Pre de Provence actually blows Provence Sante away. To be quite honest, a lot of people don't feel the same. Um, that being said, I thank you for watching this review. And God bless, enjoy, and everyone get your shaves on, okay? Thanks a lot, and have a great day. Bye-bye.